Chapter 13, Lesson 5. Choose appropriate measures of center and variability. So our objective is you will choose, or you will make calculations or make a box plot to choose appropriate measures of center and variability to describe a data set. Our central question is how can you choose appropriate measures of center and variability to describe a data set? Outliers, gaps, and clusters in a data set can affect both the measures of center and variability. Some measures of center and variability may describe a particular set of data better than others. So if we look at unlock the problem, it says Thomas is an article for Thomas is writing an article for the school newsletter about a paper airplane competition. In the distant category, Kara's airplanes flew 17 feet, 16 feet, 18 feet, 15 feet, and 2 feet. Should Thomas use the mean, median, or mode to best describe Kara's results? explain your reasoning. So first let's find the mean and see which of these would make the most sense. So to find the mean we need to take 17 plus 16 plus 18 plus 15 plus 2. And we're going to divide that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because there's 5 in the data set. So if we add up 17 plus 16 plus 18 plus 15 plus 2, we are going to get 68 as our total. And again, divide that by 5. We do 68 divided by 5. We get 13.6. 13.6 feet. That's our mean. Okay. Now we're going to order the data from least to greatest to find the median. So we have 2, 15, 16, 17, and 18. The median is 16. So the data set has no repeated values, so there is no mode. That's what occurs most, but there's no repeats. The mean is less than four out of the five values, so it is not a good description of the center of the data. Okay, so the middle of this, the mean, is less than four out of the five. It's less than most of them. So that doesn't tell us a good center that way. That doesn't make sense. So the median, look at this the median 16 is closer to most of the values the only one it's not really close to is that outlier there the two so the median is the best way to describe pairs results so Thomas should use the median to describe Kara's results okay over here it says do you need to order the numbers you need to Order the numbers um, to find the median. But not for the um, mean. Oops. Okay, math idea. The measures of center for some data sets may be very close together. If that is the case, um, you can list more than one measure as the best way to describe the data. So if these were really close, like if this was 16 and this is 16.01, those are extremely close. So it could be both. It, either the median or the mean would both be the same amount um, of accuracy for that problem. But since the 16 is much closer to all of these numbers, except for the outlier, and the mean is not that close, then the median is definitely the better choice there. So explain why the two modes may be a better description than the mean or the median of the data set for this. So if there's only two sets of numbers here, 
okay? And the mode would be the one that represents, I mean, both of those, the mode is two and four. There's four of each of those. So there's two modes, and those are the only information in that data set. So it would be more accurate representation of that um, data set than if we said the mean and median, because the mean and the median for this set would be 4.5. But 4.5 is not very close to 7. It's not very close to 2. But the mode, 2 and 7, represents every value in that data set. Example, Mr. Tobin is buying a book online. He compares prices of the book at several different sites. The table shows his results. Make a box plot of the data, then use the plot to describe or to find the range and the interquartile range. Which measure better describes the data? Explain your reasoning. First step is to make a box plot. So we're going to write the data in order from least to greatest. So we have five, 15, 16, 17, 17, 18, 35. Make sure that you mark them off as you go. So five, and then I had 15, 16, 17, 17, 18, 35. Yep, used them all. Find the median of the data set. So my median is 17. And that is dollars because it tells me that right here. And then the lower quartile. So in order to do that, we need to look at the left and the right side of the median. So here is my lower quartile. The median of my lower quartile is 15. This is my upper quartile. The median, the middle number of my upper quartile is 18. Okay, now we need to make the box plot. My least value is 5. So I need a dot there. My greatest value is 35. My median is 17. My lower quartile is 15. And my upper quartile is 18. Now I need to make my box that shows the upper and lower quartiles line through the middle for the median. And then these whiskers go out to the greatest and least values. So that's what your should look like. Then go down to step two. Use the box plot to find the range and the interquartile range. So the range is going to be those far ends. So the 35 minus the five. It's the greatest value minus the least value, which the range is $30. The interquartile range is that upper quartile, which is 18, minus the lower quartile, which is 15. So 18 minus 15 equals $3. So five of the seven prices are within the interquartile range. So the inter interquartile range Oops. describes the data because the range makes it appear that the data values are more varied than they actually do. So the range is 30, but that interquartile range is 3. So five of the seven prices are within this range here which makes it much more precise here than if we have 30. How can you tell from the box plot how varied the, the data is? So the shape of the box tells us how varied the data, the datas are. So the box is short, our box was really, really short, which means the data is less varied, okay? There's less range of it. But the longer the box means there's, that there's more variables in that data. 
Okay, go ahead and continue with the share and show. Remember that our objective for 13.5 is you will make calculations or make a box plot to choose appropriate measures of sensor and variability to describe the data set. 